I'm in Union Square, New York City with one of my favorite magicians. Yeah, he's just an all-around cool guy. It's Matt Holtzclaw. Howdy. We're doing a talkie walkie through a, a what seems like a farmer's market or something it, it in is Union a, Square. Union Square Farmer's Market, that's it's pretty, right. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty good, this, yeah, it's this farmer's market. Solid. And you just move into this area, and I'm <laughs> real jealous because it's so nice. Oh man, you get all these fresh vegetables and fresh eggs over here. It's, it's awesome. Fresh egg. I don't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not your thing. Well, egg. My wife's vegan, so we. Oh, were, that's right. Sometimes we make. I mean, I make stuff with eggs, but she does. Oh right, right. I but yeah, I. I you know, do you refrigerate your eggs? Yes. We're starting strong. Yes. I like, come in here hot, man. With these, yeah. uh, these hot takes on eggs. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right, because I don't think they do in other countries. Well, I, I've seen I, plenty of places I, don't. They like they do like a, yeah. I've, I've known like people who they just like take the eggs out of them, leave yeah. them on the counter. I'm like, yeah. I don't know when did we start doing that. I used to live with um, a couple that did that. They just had eggs in a bowl next to the refrigerator. Really to me, the butter out having butter out. Oh yeah, butter out. I wouldn't I do. No, I wouldn't odd. do that. Wouldn't do that. Okay, so you are a magician, which is so cool. Yeah, I guess it is. It's so cool. <laughs> I'm too close to it now, man. I'm like, uh, I have to remind myself that, you know, ten year old me would be freaking Stoke. out. Oh my god, to be like, this full time thing. It's full time magic. It's nuts. That's a, I think that's a Nate Bargatze album. Oh yeah. But it's true. It is kind of cool to be full time any art. I, any any as a live entertainer, you're, you get you know, it's, it's just like how the hell that happened. I mean, how did it, how well how did it happen for you? When did you did you ever ever have like a day job before oh, you were full time? Oh yeah yeah. A lot what was day. what is your day job? I was a landscaper. I was, I was a zookeeper. That's I, pretty exciting. I worked at Barnes and Noble. Did this one? No, but oh. Barnes and Noble. That, <laughs> yeah. That's cool. I worked in the stock room of like a William Sonoma. Uh -huh. I, uh, there was, I worked in a haunted house. Woo! Right, haunted, well, haunted house kind of seems like it could oh, be yeah. like magic -y. Closest thing to show business I, I, I could get into at like 16 years old. They're like, <laughs> scare uh, people all day. Haunted house for a magician would be like, uh, just pick a card. Okay, now pick another card. Pick another card. <laughs> pick another that, card. You're right. That's like hell. Hell for yeah, me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you've had, a, man, you've had a lot of them. Are these jobs that you just had to keep your, to like fund? Your magic oh, oh, life? I just didn't. I think I was in a. I never knew anyone in show business. Ah. You know, I, I didn't know anybody who made a living performing. So I think it yeah. was just a rough thing. I, I thought you just had to get a job. It's hard when your parents aren't famous, right? That was really rough. Yeah. I know. You gotta. You gotta um, do a lot of really scandalous things you wouldn't sure. normally. <laughs> but no. But no I, I, seriously, I just. I just. I think I didn't know that you uh, could just work for yourself. I, oh. I, I didn't know anybody self-employed. Oh know? yeah, that's true. So even just that. Like starting an LLC, <laughs> I didn't know what the hell that meant. You know, so. I just started an LLC maybe a year ago. Oh, it was, it, well, I, I had one earlier, and then I had to. No, I did another one. And oh, this place looks cool. Oh, yeah, that's cute. I like it. Yeah, that's very. That's very you. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. Maybe I'll stop over there later. Uh huh. Um, what were we saying? I got distracted. Oh, just, just uh, yeah, what it, what it was to get into. Oh yeah. To, to be, I mean, so I, you know, I, I think I went full time. Full time, full time. Yeah, I was, I was 26. Oh wow! And and I have been that way ever since. And but it, no one told me. How, no one told me there's like there's slow months. And oh there's yeah, a, you got to save up. And you're going to work every day. There's some you got to maintain the maintain the farm every day. It's it's so funny because you might get a couple thousand dollars for a gig. Yeah. You're like oh my gosh, that's so much money. Yeah. But like it could be the only gig you get that month. Oh yeah, right. Then it's you, like you, you, not you know, a lot. And 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 that's uh, you got to treat that. You gotta treat the hundred dollars or whatever is at fifty dollars. You know, you gotta put half of that gotta, way to pay taxes. It's gotta last a, a minute. Yeah, no one, no one tells you that crap unless you. Uh, and I had friends. You know, my Prakash is my business partner, and he like he actually read business books. And oh, see, that's good to have. Rate, rate, his dad's a businessman, and he yeah. he had some preternatural abilities with that that I did not. And uh, oh, that's well, that's always helpful. Oh man, yeah. So you know, I had good people around me at a young age, like when I started out yeah. in, here in New York. And, Kind of pushed me in the right direction on how to do this for a living. That's cool. Yeah. I, so, yeah. Who were who are some people in New York that helped? You? Oh, Jamie Ian Swiss. Oh yeah, he's good. Oh yeah, yeah. He's a good magician. Yeah, really, really great guy. I think I know, like, be, from be, being in the juggling world, mm -hmm. I kind of be. I'm, uh, 
by association into the magic world mm -hmm. as well a little yes. bit. Right. And so I think, but there's more magicians. I mean, I met you through that world. I mean, I was... Yeah, there's more magicians than jugglers. Oh, yeah. So I feel like. Well, what you do is actually hard, so. No. <laughs> I mean, what I do isn't, but what, uh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know, no, I know what you're saying, but. We're faking it, you're really no, doing it. No, but you're it, really you know? doing, some, you're really doing some cool fakery though. Yeah, yeah. It don't, don't. I'm not shitting on it too much, I'm just no. saying. It, it, it's a, it's a, there's a higher barrier of entry to be a good juggler and make a living than it is to be a magician. Well, who knows? There, yeah. they, there, there's crap jugglers and crap magicians making millions of dollars. Not millions. <laughs> yeah, you're not making wrong. Making thousands. You're not making wrong. Making hundreds. Do you think there's more theft in juggling? Oh, that's a yeah. great question. Well, because there's more magicians, just in sheer numbers, mm. no. But if, if there were the same amount hmm. of jugglers and magicians, okay. Maybe it'd be pretty equal, but I don't know what the routine would be because there's like shtick yeah. that people do. Like, sure. like I hate this one routine that I see a lot of jugglers do. Well, they'll have a volunteer from the audience lay down and hold a balloon. Oh and yeah. And they'll blindfold them. And yeah. Like, oh yeah, yeah. It's so bad. Right. The and old I'm sorry. Old, the old clown thing. If you're the... one of my friends and you do that, <laughs> but just it's time to let it go. Yeah. I think it's not. Maybe you you have a. What are you doing? <laughs> Hello. Okay. Honking at it. Maybe. <laughs> I was like, what are, you, what are you doing? I wish you could honk when you're walking. That oh, would you be, can. Well, you, yeah, I know, but that's like, hey. But I don't know. <laughs> see that. That's it. <laughs> That'd be people, you know, does the same thing, I think. <gasps> oh, so no, I think, well, think of in the magic world, there's kind of this beautiful thing where you, you attach a name of the creator of even the tiniest move. Uh huh. And you kind of honor their, their, their history and then. Their, their creation and you kind of keep their memory alive, but also it just get, keeps credit always kind of alive with who came up with what. And and I, I love that. I think it's really pretty great. And uh, I've been in so many other art forms, it feels like it's like, no, I'm just gonna, there's a kind of a freedom to, I mean, it's looked down on, I think, in every art form. Yeah. But the, I don't think, when someone steals in magic, you know, yeah. when someone takes someone else's routine or right. and, and just does it, man, you get, you are just like a pariah. But you know, you okay. So, but so many magicians' routines, I guess. Okay, so I'm, I'm an outsider, right? Sure, sure. So, what? Like, what's it? Give me. Can, do, can you give me an example of a routine that's been stolen a bunch? Because, oh, because uh, like okay. sometimes I see a lot of magicians doing the same act, yeah. but they have like permission to do it, or like right. they bought it. So like, it's more that yeah. So if you publish it, if you put it in a book, uh -huh. if it's, it's in a fair game, then it's, for it's, anybody, it's sort of you've, you've you've said look. If you read this, I'm giving this to you. Have at it. You know, like that's kind of the, the you know the beauty of it is that there's these little kind of like rules to start. Like if you publish it, it's it's I'm make, I want people to do this trick. Uh -huh. But it's like you know you're you're Rob Zabrecki, you know the guy. Oh yeah, he used to play in bands, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, he's a, a Possum Dixon. He's yeah. Brilliant, brilliant magician. Yeah. Very creative. He's taken some classic effects and really made them his own. And you know, there's a guy that like did his, did his act on TV, and acted like he never met him or heard of him, and it's like you guys were at the uh -oh. castle the same week. Oh, you know? really? Yeah, it's like that kind of thing. We're just like, that's very obviously, word for word, his act. Yeah, I don't like that. That shit's not nice. No. And so, that kind of thing happens. I was like, I was sad for Rob because the problem is, if they see the other guy, they're like, if they see Rob do it, they're like, oh, are you stealing that guy's act? It's like, it's quite the opposite, you know? Oh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I had uh, my friend Ben, someone did one of his. Oh, yeah, Ben uh, Seidman. Ben Seidman did uh, one of his, his um, I Vanish on Fool Us. Right. Without permission. Right. And that, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I, I get people do that, but. Yeah. So that's what you mean, I guess. There's a lot of theft and like, in that. There are classics like, you know, I love the cups and balls, the yeah. oldest trick in magic. Oh, yeah. And there's, I mean, that thing is so, so public domain. Sure. But, but there are handlings of it that maybe are so specific to something. Like, if you do a clear cups and balls with yeah, alu aluminum foil. Like, yeah, that's a pen and teller. That's yeah. pen and teller. Like, why would, what are you doing? You right. Know, like, that's so clearly their take on it. Yeah. All right, we are in, uh, wait, what do you call it? This is Madison Square Park. Madison Square Park, that's right. That's the Flatiron Building. Oh, yeah. This is the Flatiron Building, uh, which was also, like, was that mostly famous from, like, the Spider-Man movie, you think? <laughs> it was the Daily Bugle. Yeah. Uh, bef before that, I mean, it's, I mean, it's, it's been it's, famous because it's just a weird thing. It's an odd thing. shape. Apparently, it was a place uh, during the ages of petticoats and the big dresses where... 
if you you know if you got a glimpse of someone's ankle that was like a big deal like oh, oh. men would stand there and wait for the wind to blow past it because it kind of created a big current to look at ankles to look at ankles wow a bunch yeah. of pervs yeah pervy people man it's whatever you can't see oh i guess that's true <laughs> that is true it is it yeah i think seinfeld part. Part. Go to the part yeah seinfeld had a bit about that about if, if you had if women had only this covered this part of their yeah there would be strip clubs of just them like showing it. Oh, that's probably true. Yeah. Yeah. We can, yeah. There's a nice little dog park over here. We can Ugh. holler at dogs. Do you think people who make Instagram accounts for their dogs should be put down? Oh, hmm. <laughs> Man, I'd lose a lot of friends. Yeah, we both know a lot of people that I do don't, that. I don't follow a single goddamn dog. I don't either. Yeah. Um, it's like, I'm not going to follow you and your pet. <laughs> that's great. When you post enough of your pet already, <laughs> I, you know. I think Ben Simon's close to making an account for Juno. Oh no! And it's when a, he does that, I might, I might just not have to be friends with I, him. I, I think it's a thing. Ben, if, don't do it. I mean, don't I love it. dogs and all. I, really, I love animals. I just, I don't like. They don't. All they're thinking about is eating territory, mating. I need, I need to piss or shit. They don't, they don't have, they don't have like a deep, deep. That's like you start making up stories for them. I'm like, no, come on. And then. And then they start writing in the first person, like the dog's oh, like, no. Today, mom and dad took me to the dog park, and I saw yeah, Hank, and I no. love Hank. And then, and I'm just, oh. I, I want. I like that it makes you happy. I don't don't make me engage with it. All right, all right. <laughs> Blocked. Yeah. <laughs> How's stand up coming for you? Stand up. The good question. Last night was fun because I did a show, and I thought I was only doing 15 minutes, and they said, hey, do 20. I love a good long set. It yeah. Used to, it used to terrify me because it didn't have the material. <laughs> that would be a problem. Yeah. <laughs> but now, it, no, but like, you know, now it's it's so fun. And um, it's good. I where, have were, a, where were you? It was a bar show in Brooklyn oh. at this uh, venue called June Shine. I'd never been there before. I haven't heard of it. They make a lot of kumbacha. Kumbacha? Kumb kombucha? Kombucha. That's kombucha. it. I even, that's even a... It's a hard a one. joke in a show, kombucha, and I can't even pronounce it. But anyway, <laughs> uh, it was, uh, it was, um, it was fun. Yeah, it's been good. I just, you know, I like to write new jokes all yes. the time. Yeah, you're you're constantly writing. I'm trying to, and it's just, well, I do so many videos now <laughs> that I like don't have as much time to write. So yeah. I'm trying to every like as soon as I get home from this, yeah, I'm just gonna write. And what is it like for you? Do you do you do you? Like you were over the other day, and we, yeah. we were we were riffing on something, and you, yeah. ah, you wrote it down really fast. And, yeah. And I've always been fascinated by that. Like when it comes to like, I mean, I I got write jokes too, but like yeah. you have to you have to really crank it, and it's all the jokes. Yeah, it's it's you a know. lot, and sometimes I'll like I wrote I could tell you the joke I wrote yesterday. Okay. And a lot of my jokes kind of just start as premises. Yes. Which, if you don't know what a premise is, like uh the 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 first sentence of a joke the idea behind the joke yeah so it was um the joke is i know i'm a loser because i went on a school trip after i graduated high school that's the premise that's the premise right which which will probably get a laugh maybe sure, sure. maybe i'm not no by the way i have not tested this joke out so i don't know if it's true or not i mean i don't know if it's good or not and then i was gonna say um um there's no coming back from that uh but um, now they changed it, so you can't do that anymore. <laughs> but it is cool to have a law named after you. <laughs> See, that's good. All right. Yeah. Nice. So it went somewhere. That's nice. I like but, it. Yeah, it's a little short, sweet. Yeah. The thing, I like doing like these short, random jokes sometimes too. Not really one-liners. It's a little bit more than that. But is you know, if it doesn't work, you're, you're just out of it real quick. Yeah. And if it does work, you can just like keep adding tags to it. Sure. To make it work. And maybe get... I'll try that one tonight. I don't know. That's solid. I like, I like that. I'm at the comedy cellar tonight and I hate trying new stuff Dude, there. You're the, that's just amazing. It's like the that's just one of the best damn clubs in the world. And yeah, you're, you're it's, there it's, all the time. It's I'm not, fucking amazing. It is it is sometimes I have to stop and pinch myself. Dude, it's what you're saying earlier, it's like, are you think about that? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. When I when I when I met you, you were mainly juggling. Yeah. You're hilarious, yep. but thank you. Good. But uh, to see that, you, you being there regularly, it's well, just incredible. It is fun. And you also have a regular magic gig. I do. At the McKittrick Hotel. Well, now it's not at the McKittrick Hotel. It's produced by the McKittrick. It's called Speak Easy Magic. If you yeah. want to see Matt Holtzclaw, what are you, like eight shows a week? Ten? It's <laughs> not quite. What is it? How many it's, uh, shows? It's Tuesday through Saturday, and Tuesday, it's Wednesday. two shows on Friday. So, uh, so it's, it's six shows a week. Yeah. 
That's a good amount of That's nuts. It's a it's a job. It's a full time gig. How, that is so cool though. Yeah. Just it's like a, I wish I had a job like that where I was just doing comedy and like with my friends that I liked. Yeah. A lot. Oh, it's awesome. I mean, like I we had that little fear of like familiarity breeding contempt, but oh, right now yeah. it's just it's just awesome. I mean, look, there's people who are. It's most of my life. For work, is I'm, I'm interrupting people at a cocktail party. They don't know there's a magician. And yeah, they, they did exactly. not sign up for this. I'm having yeah. to woo them within seconds into watching this and enjoying it and hopefully freaking out. And maybe they want to drag me over to someone else. And Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's do that it, same trick again. Yeah, do they yeah, do that? Yeah, that. Do that one with the thing. Then they, they'll, they'll give away the ending. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do the thing where the sign it's card's a, under his watch. Yeah, yeah, I was just going to say that one. Thanks. That's great. <laughs> Take his watch. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. yeah. Um, but here at Speakeasy Magic, I mean, they're showing up. They've paid good money to be there, yeah. and they're hungry and excited to see this particular art form. Yeah, that's unheard of. You know, and I mean, it's the, not even a, it's not like not it's not a cheap ticket either. No, so these aren't just like randos. These no, are people that like planned a night. It's like Broadway, <laughs> like Broadway yeah, prizes. Yeah, yeah. No, Eugene Berger was a great magician, uh, one of the best ever lived, and he said this thing that close up magic is a. It's an art form without an easel. It's it doesn't have a venue. It doesn't have uh -huh. a there's no venue for it. And we made a venue for this thing, and it's, wow. there's nothing else like it. That is so cool. So yeah. what makes this magic show different than uh, you know a few of the other magic shows floating around the city? Uh, this one is majority of it is close up. You're you're seeing a lot of different kinds of magicians and different kinds That's of magic. That's my favorite. And it's all right here in front of you and it's happening in your hand. You know. Yeah. They don't they don't push that part of it, but that is the show. People come in, I think, hoping, expecting to see a stage show, but you're yeah. sitting at this table with these other people, and and then these these different magicians. I mean, Todd Robbins, the host and creator, he called it sort of speed dating with magic. So wow, for about ten minutes, you see somebody do like you know some of the best card tricks you've ever seen in your life. The next guy does incredible mind reading. Another oh. guy is a pickpocket. Another guy, wow, you know, uh, does incredible things with coins, and you know, but it has some of the best. Uh, you got a whole yeah. like sampler platter yeah. of magic. Yeah, and it was in the McKittrick Hotel for four years, and then they, they made us our own venue for the show, where we it was it's just It's doing ours. so well. They're like, hey, yeah. we'll yeah. start. That's so cool, though. So it's, not, it's not a new venue. We, we say it's just called the uh, the Overlook Bar on 24th Street, right over right. here where we just were. That's um, awesome. Yeah, we're real proud of it. It's it's a lot of it's a lot of fun. I have yet to see it. I oh. want to. I know you gave me, like, dates. To, I got to I gotta come. Yeah, bring that wife of yours. And I, will, I will. I uh. will. Oh, uh, I thought uh, something happened. This me too. Like someone got hit by a car. Yeah, you hear the shouting, you know, uh, you can't tell Usually just ignore it. Uh, yeah, yeah, you, you can't tell. Just walk away. Yep. I just, just walk. Yeah, how, how much do you guys interact with uh, people on this, uh, on this here show? Oh, it depends who I'm with. Sometimes people are a lot more open and sometimes, uh, I don't know. I'm, I, sometimes it, it, we get a lot of drive-by. People will be like, nerds. <laughs> 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 they're not wrong. No, they're not. Uh, or are there, we had someone say like, uh, someone played uh, did a penis drive by recently. I was. What with, does that mean? They just were like penis. Oh, <laughs> I was afraid to be actually. But like that just makes me want to play the like that. I'm. I love like that doesn't bother me. No, that's I wonderful. would do that too. That's content. Like, there's a re <laughs> yeah, yeah that and there's like a, obviously. There's a reason why I chose to do this podcast on the street of New York. Yeah, because it's, it's not boring. So it's, weird, man. So much shit happens here. I mean, I mean, I am. We are those people for an hour. Oh, you I know? know. I know. <laughs> but it's okay. I think we're I doing think it so. all right. I've been called worse. No, no one seems that that annoyed with us yet. No, I, I am very like you know. I'm pretty sociable. Uh, I, I can talk to anybody. But yeah. on the street of New York, I'm 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 a you know bubble. a hermit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, same. <laughs> Oh. Like you're, you're standing kind of close, Marcus, to be honest. <laughs> Am I really? I need no, to get no. us both in the shot. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm joking. We're just like, <laughs> so. Uh, uh. Yeah, it's uh, it's always um, it's always fun to do that. But like sometimes it gets too busy. Like I did this yeah. once in Times Square, and it was like too loud, and I just. Oh yeah, we're going to Herald Square, and I was thinking, about, got, I was like, hey. Yeah, it's fine. Well, well, I've done Herald Square. Should we cross here? Oh yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. And we All can right. um. It's funny. Should, should we tell them where we're going, or should it yeah, be a surprise? We're we're gonna go to Tannen's Magic Shop. It is one of the oldest magic shops still running in America. It uh, it's just an incredible, beautiful little place that no one knows about unless you are, ma a magician or magic adjacent. It's yeah, it's just an incredible spot. Um, they do this incredible uh, this camp every year called Tannen's Magic Camp. It's been a documentary about it. I I go there and perform and teach at it and I performed at it twice. That's right. Yes you have. Twice. Yes. I did yeah. 2015 and then this year. 
but it's just an amazing institution and a lot of great guys work there and we're gonna see if there's i think max is probably working oh, right awesome i awesome. think yeah. i mean every time i go in there which has only been twice he's usually there he's been there uh yeah it's had i mean it's had just a long history i mean it was it was the shop where david copperfield and david blaine they first kind of as kids learn what they do did, did and, david blaine go to magic camp i don't know ah uh, okay that's a good question and now the guy who owns tandems is this guy named adam yeah and he seems like a young guy yeah is he a, he's like a younger guy it's hard for me to know nowadays man oh, okay you know, like a, well he's like gotta be like no older, no much older than 50. no if anything oh, no 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 oh, he's, he's, he's younger than that right you know, like i mean you know i'm i'm 44 but i look 60 so i don't know you don't <laughs> i can't tell I can't. I don't know age. I can't. He's like he. To me, he seems like a young guy. Yeah, I think. He's, I mean, yeah, forties maybe. Forties. Um, but he's he's been really good for it. He's really taken it to another oh, yeah. level. No, did he? Has he always owned Tannins? No, 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 no. Oh. Uh, when uh, original owner was Lou Tannin. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, right. I didn't know that. There you go. Um, it's gone through a lot of different hands though. When I when I moved to New York in you know twenty something years ago, it was Tony Spino was the owner. Oh, okay. So we're going to cross here, right? Yes. It's had a few other owners. But man, Adam, I'll tell you too, what's funny is the first time I saw it, I was so excited because I, I, you know, magic shops are they are a dying breed. There are not yeah. many of them left. Right. I mean, retail is in a rough place, especially niche retail. Yeah, like that. Amazon. But oh. like I, a lot of these magic props, yeah. you can't get online. You can't no. get on Amazon. No. You got to get. You got to come to the source. And what you do too is often you, you need to buy it and go, oh, that's how that works. Okay, I gotta, I'm gotta. i gonna make it myself because it already broke. Oh, right. <laughs> you know, like you with your fire wallet. I did I did a fire wallet, uh, I, I don't know, what do you call it? A gag, a video with a fire okay. wallet where it was a drunk clown and a drunk magician. Yes, I saw that. Yes. Stumbled onto the train. That's right. And you know, you I get, my, my thinking is, just post something, <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> they, they can't all be home runs. But well, this one got like 20,000 views on Instagram, which uh, for me isn't bad. Right. You know, I think anything over 10 has got success. Yeah. Who, who knows? But, but yeah, and I bought this wallet here. It was like 40 bucks. Yeah. Um, and uh, they break. I mean, magic props, are, they're, they're made fast. And yeah. yeah they're made fast. Uh, no, we're not no, Jewish, right. but not today. Hey, you but thank too. you. I wish, it, I, was, I wish I was Jewish. Keep asking if we're Jewish. I mean, I don't what know. What is the thing? Are they doing a blessing or a prayer? Are they or something? doing a, a Yes, sorry. yes. They're not the first people to ask me if I was Jewish today. No. No. Hmm. I'm, I'm avoiding all these jokes that are. I know. Me too. I know. I in. know. No. Yeah. There's. That's loud. Um. I prefer to see the pedicabs over like the horse and oh, carriage. Oh, I agree. Stuff. Completely. Completely. Yeah. Even though they're annoying with their lights and like. Right. It's, it's a little like I'll, six flags on a I'll, bike. I'll take human suffering over exactly. animal suffering any day. Absolutely. Yeah. I um, what, I was going to ask you. What's, what, do you have any like ramp up thing you do before you go on stage? Is there any little mantra? Or oh, you know, that's a great question. I want to know if you do too. I I kind of just look over my set list and then I text my wife up next and she'll say how fun and I'll, I'll like hey, it. So I'm and then, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> they asked if you were. What is yeah. going on? Um, this is why I think we live in a simulation. It's the, the beard. I don't know. Oh, um, oh here we go. Here we go. So I... Nothing really... No, nothing not, nothing crazy. Yeah, no, me, you would think me, neither, me neither. Yeah. But you okay, have... so I'm going to put my camera down so they don't tell us that we can't film oh, here. Oh, okay. Even though I think we can. How's it going? But, hey, how you doing? Better detainments. Going to the magic shop. Thank you very much. All right. I'm yeah. trying not to edit this. I want to I want to keep it all straight yeah. shot. Like yeah, um, yeah. Coppola. I like that. Yeah, I don't know if Coppola had a uh, Scorsese. Yeah, yeah. Scorsese shot. Yeah. This is cool. So you have to take an elevator up to the sixth floor. Sixth floor. It's a magic number. <laughs> Two more and they'd be Satan. That's how I remember. That's how I remember. Oh, is it? <laughs> if I was... Did you press it three times? Yeah, do. Right. Let me show you. That one, that one goes down. Oh, no. <laughs> New York elevator. Are you ready? This is not big. This is it. This is not a big one. This is not big. Oh, gosh. Only two people. Can fit in here. So you were saying your, your mantra, your don't really do much. No, I go over my set list. I'm in my head, and I just go out there and mm. have a good time. What do you do before a show? I warm my voice up because I got such sort of a southern mush mouth. I got I got to over enunciate. Yeah. So I'll I'll do that, and then uh, I'll kind of just like stand up straight and I'll take a deep breath, and also I'll kind of tell myself like talk to them, like really. Oh, sure. Don't just talk at them. 
talk to them, really try to communicate, and that's what I try to and keep in mind when I'm out there, like don't just don't just let the record spin. Like, mm. Really make it happen tonight. I like you that. Know, so don't let the record spin. That's great. Be yeah. in the moment. Be in the moment. And yeah. listen and really listen to them too. If if they if they aren't with you or if they're if they throw out something, yeah. can you you know, I don't know. There's comedy seller kind of uh, cut out okay, okay, let's 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 change subjects. All right. This is Tannen's magic shop. All right. This is the Tannen's mystery box. And this is a. Uh, what, so, what do you do here? Well, if you if you buy one of these boxes, it's full of magic. But you, you don't know what's in you it. You don't know what's in it. Is that yeah. true? Yeah. Should we buy it? How much are they? Give me one, two, three, four. We have three. Three? Okay, watch this. Oh, are you? Three, Good. Three, four, How are you? Good. Good to see you, Max. What's up, Max? Hey. How you doing, man? We're doing um, a podcast. Nice. Talkie walkie. One, two. We walked here. This is the incredible Max. Six, seven, eight, He's a mentalist from Ukraine. And we're thrilled to have him here in New York City. Yeah, he's he's, awesome. he does speak easy magic quite a bit. Do you? Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Max, is there anything you can show my the people watching this? Of course. Sorry to put you on the spot real quick, but while we have you, Be better you than me. <laughs> All right. So as when he's getting ready, you are you ready? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know if you needed. Oh, he's a pro. Yeah. Look at that. All right. I get to go. I have a padlock. Uh, can you check it for me? And make sure it's real padlock. Make it's sure a real it's padlock. Locked. Legit. Is it locked? That does not open, yeah. no. Yeah. And you actually need a key. Oh. Check that it's, well, it works. Does the key work? It works. Yeah. Yep. Okay, lock it for me and hold the key. Okay. I'll put a lock right here. So now I will try to open this lock without using the key. With one hand. With one hand? Yeah, and I'm without looking at it. <laughs> what? So put on setting when we turn my No way. No way. I heard yeah. it. Yeah, it's unlocked. Yeah, no way. Just prove it. And the difficult part is lock it. <laughs> that's not that's not a good trick. Oh. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> is it yeah. done? Oh you it's did. locked. Wow. Max, come on man. So yeah. good. You're so practice. good. Wow. Uh, let's check. Oh wow. Yeah, it's, Whoa. it's locked. <laughs> that's incredible. <laughs> That is incredible. <laughs> you can see it's solid. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's a great trick. That That's is great. great. Yeah, sure, sure. Locked. That, that, That's locked. Yeah. That's yeah. not a, at all what I thought it was going to be. That was a curveball. That it? was a curveball. That's what I like about Max. Woo. Throwing them curves. That's good stuff. Dang, man. That was really good. Really fun. I like that. Max, how much are the um, mystery boxes in the hall? Uh, unfortunately, it's sold out. Oh, they're sold out. So popular. Yeah, that. Oh, uh, no more. Oh, no. no more. When are they right. bringing them back, do you think? But I hope we will get them soon. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, let it, let, you let me know. There's one of your last uh, guests, Harrison Greenbaum's book right there. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's right. You are all terrible, volume nine. Yeah. Do you have eight, one through eight? I do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I do. It's pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. This place is incredible. Isn't it beautiful? It's such yeah. a nice place. They, they really is neat. There's an incredible library of... Man, hi there. How's it going? How are you? There's a lot of incredible... Best, the best way to learn right there, books. This is Houdini's bathtub. Wow. Yeah. I don't know what this is, but it looks pretty great. It does, That's the, it does look cool. Society of American Magicians, I think. Oh, right. wild. Yeah. Uh, a lot of history in here. Of history. Now, these yeah. seem more like like illusions for like a, a kids party or yeah. something. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, I mean, this this also seems like the stuff because I started doing magic when before I juggled. So this seems like the stuff I had. Yeah. Like I had. Um, I think they had a one of the guillot oh, like that guillotine I had mm -hmm. growing up. Yep. Uh, maimed a lot of a lot of uh, young kids. Has it really? I mean, you know, it's got it. It must have been. Anything man-made fails at some point. Oh, know. that's true. <laughs> that's true. But no, it's a pretty great place. And, yeah. Uh, Didn't they used to have the boots that David Blaine wore in the ice? I don't know. Thing? I never saw that. Because there was another location. This was in a different yeah. location, and it was a little bit. Bigger was it, or no? Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not the same. But yeah. I thought they had a David Blaine, and it's, I was like, always, I was a big David Blaine fan growing it's, it's, up. It's, it's great. It's, it's moved around a bit. It's moved mm -hmm. around different, oh, okay. different places. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. Oh, look at this. This is my buddy Eric's show. Yeah. Fun little shop here. It's pretty great, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. All right. Thank you, Max. Good to see you, Max. Thanks for the trick. Thank you. That was awesome. Oh, sure. Do you yeah, want to show us me? more? Yeah. Of course. Give me a second. I open it. All right. We're going to see another trick. Yes. Bye. I mean, no, seriously. When I was, I, I never, there were no magic shops around me growing up necessarily. I had one for a brief window of time when I was like eight. Yeah. It was there for a few years and it closed and my little, you know, tiny hometown. Places like this are just there's not many of them. Yeah. This is this is the 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 one here in America. That is so cool. So I grew up right next to a magic shop. That's crazy. On right next it was like on the next block I lived on. I could, I could walk there. Wow. Thirty seconds to walk. And it was called Napoleon's. And it was like a hobby shop that had like sculptures you could paint. Mm. Then it just had a magic section and they had a guy doing demos. Wow. And that's where I bought like my linking rings. I bought like the guillotines. I bought needle through the arm. That's where Ben got his and, Well then I sold my stuff to Ben. <laughs> <laughs> At a low low price. Yeah. Um for no other reason other than we were kids. Right. Oh, I worked on this this is a fun thing. Um, there's all these different magic posters. That one there, Play Dead, that was directed by Teller. Yes. And created by Teller and Todd Robbins. And I worked on that. And uh, I saw that show. got to consult for that creepy, sort of a bloody, gory seance thing. I love a good show with uh, full frontal nudity, and that show had it. I had a good amount of it. Yeah. <laughs> that was love. crazy. It was, I was not expecting it was, that. No one was. It was, it was, a, it was a, strangely a hit. <laughs> Who's I, whose idea was that? Uh, Teller and Todd. It know? was like yeah. a, a naked woman in, in painted green, was it? Uh, it was, she was this, this evil spirit uh -huh. that uh, we, we cut open someone from the audience every night. It was a different person from the audience every night. No, no stooges. Yeah, no, none. Cut her open and we pulled this naked woman, like dead woman, and she came out and and Todd, Todd would cover her up briefly. Yeah. She, unraveling now, she's a, a an eighty year old naked woman, <laughs> and and then she walks out towards the audience. Wait, she was eighty years old. Yeah, lady. Wasn't yeah. there a younger one too? It was. It was the younger one that she turned into the she older turned one. Into, yeah. And then wow. and then she'd hobble out to the front row, and the lights would go out. <laughs> so it was it was the creepiest shit. It was amazing. That was so funny. And Play Dead was really proud of that. There's yeah. my my friend Derek's show. Nothing oh, Derek, to hide. I, I got to get him on the talk. In, in and of itself. Yeah, the great show shows. The Elephant Room was a fantastic show right there. That that one. That's where this elephant. Over here came from the big elephant in the room. Oh wow! That that uh, this one here, yeah, <laughs> that thing. The elephant room was incredible. Steve Chiffo and some other guys did this amazing like meta magic show. Not not a Facebook magic show. No. Like no, a, no, no, not not not, not the brand. Yeah, exactly. Not meta. <laughs> <laughs> this is so cool. Look at all these cards too. Yeah. Tons of cards. Pretty right. Yeah, oh, there. I mean, yeah. What's the what's the story behind the robe here? Do you know? That's a good question. Maybe Max can tell us. It kind of looks like it's. It kind of looks like it's from. It was red and yellow and green. <laughs> Joseph in the amazing, amazing technology. Yeah. It could be. I wore my coat. <laughs> I was in that. Was, well, were you really? I was the Pharaoh. Wow. In high school, I can't sing, but my dad was the principal. Love you, Rick. So uh, <laughs> I would get. I would get the lead. It, it, you, have any, you have any video of this? Oh, hey, how's it going? I do. I don't know. If, I don't know. I'd have to find it. I'm, there's. I'm sure there's video I'm flying a, around. I, I need to see that. I'll, I'll send it to you. All right, Max. All you right, got Max. another one for us? Yeah. So excited. All right. I'm so stoked. So I travel a lot, and I like to collect uh, keys from the hotels. Ah. So have different envelopes. And each of these envelopes has a key inside. Uh, point to name any colors that you don't like. I don't like blue. And I don't like black. Let's start from blue. Okay. okay. So, so blue one is from London. Wow. And uh, you can see it's only one key inside. Yeah. Uh, and another one. You said black one. Black. Yeah. Yeah. yeah this one is from Germany. Oh wow, Shiza. Ooh. Um, Ooh. Dungeon. Ooh. Yeah. Kinky, kinky, yeah. Uh, choose another color. Um, green. Green. Okay, this one's, I believe, Prague. Yeah. It's oh, wow. Prague. Uh, another color. Um, what? Said that like a. Poor rat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah this one is New York. Oh, nice. Uh, another? Yellow. Yellow. Can I guess where that's from? Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, let's um. Barcelona. Barcelona, yeah. Paris. No. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's do. We... Oh, two envelopes left. Choose ones that you like. Uh, uh, the orange one on the on your right. You like orange that, one? Yeah, the orange one. So you don't like red one? No. And this one. Oh, that one's oh, Barcelona. There we are. <laughs> there we are. That's so close. So the last one is orange, yeah. Mm -hmm. And this one is from Caesar Palace, Las Vegas, Nevada. Nice. I wonder if it works. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty soon. Oh. Wow. Wow. Incredible. That's yeah. nuts, man. It's perfect match. Wow. wow. Are you psychic? No, I'm not at all. Are you Probably sure? You are. are you sure? I'm, I guess I am. That was incredible. <laughs> Thank you, Max. Thank you, Max. That was so good. That was great. Uh, do you, do you like getting fooled? I love it. You, you might not. You might not no. have gotten fooled there, but do you, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I did. Fooled. I definitely no. did. I, I might get fooled by the guys I work with all the time. They'll show me things, and, and it's just like it feels so good. You know, that's why I got into magic. I like the mystery of it. Because I wonder if there's ever people like magicians that are just like, no, I never. You can't fool me. Like, oh, yeah. I know there's like a TV show based on it, but no, like, a guy, a, a friend of mine just said like, I'm a legend for never being fooled. I was like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about that, Max? Let me show you one more. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you love your job and you love magic. Yeah, that's why I'm here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, take a look. I have some keys. Okay. Point to one of the keys. This one. This one? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, this one. Okay. We don't need this one anymore. Take a look. Did you notice? It's slightly bent. Oh. Oh, wow. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> Whoa. 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 It's really bad. Wow, it is. Jesus. Wow. It's incredible. Whoa. Whoa. What? Wow, that is. <laughs> Really bent. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Can I see it? Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that was great. Oh, man. That's incredible. Wow. Look wow. at that. Yeah, you can't unbend that. That's nuts. That's crazy. Is that what's like the most popular thing you sell here? Um, I will show you. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, this became just a uh, commercial no, for Canon. I'm completely no. okay with that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Matchbox and toothpick. Yeah. You need to penetrate all the way through. Yeah? Uh -huh. See from all angles. And pull out toothpick. Make sure it's real, solid. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. a real solid toothpick. Put it back all the way through this little hole. Oh, no. It doesn't go in. Won't go. It won't go through. Yeah, actually, it's absolutely impossible because inside of Matchbox, it's <laughs> what? solid block of rice. So it's just what? Can yeah. Through. Look at that wow. <laughs> that wild. That is so cool. It's like how the hell do they go through it? That's crazy. Amazing. That is awesome. <laughs> and that's a real toothpick. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Dang. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. I think the first thing I ever got was the, it's called the hot rod. The little, oh, little yeah. Jewel the jewel thing. The thing you turn. Yeah. Yep, that's yep. cool. And uh, I got a, back when you could sell cigarette magic to kids, I got a <laughs> the, the little cigarette, you know, move them. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And it was so, it's still so beautiful. It just works so well. Mm -hmm. I still have it. Wow. That is yeah. so cool. It's a great place. We were asking what is the... Uh... The robe. The robe. Yeah, do you know what's that? Did you notice bathtub? The bu yes, Houdini's bathtub. Uh, yeah, so when we take bath... Oh, that's for the... Oh, yeah. oh, very right. nice. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes very sense. Very nice. What is the claw machine? That, that's new. I haven't seen that before. The... Yeah, Adam bought it from auction. Okay. Pretty old. You can see it's a note. Oh, oh, yeah. Right. Made from in France. France. 1935. Or an auto casting. 
So that is not the Society of American Magicians. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. I'm glad. I'm, bl I'm blind. I can't see. No, you never know. People may fact check in the comments. Yeah, yeah, I get really mad at me. You, that's so cool. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty great, right? I love this place. Yeah. yeah. Love it. All right. Thank you for showing us. I appreciate that, Max. Yeah. Thank you, brother. That was so nice. Very I'll see you cool. soon. See yeah, good to see you, Max. Yeah. Bye -bye. Carry on. <laughs> so cool. I just see like one of those Jeff McBride masks. Oh. Wow. Look at, look at the wall of fame. Yeah, we got to get you uh -huh. on here one day. Oh, yeah. You know, we should just think I have to be dead first. Then. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> are these all? These are all dead. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. not, not anytime soon, then. I hope not. No. No. That was fun. That was fun. What a cool! He's such a nice guy. Max just like is the sweetest willing guy. to show us magic tricks. I no, love that. No, that's what that's what they do, you know. And it's it's, it's rare to be able to go in and see yeah. someone really demonstrate it. And uh, excuse me. If you buy it online or you watch a video of it or you read it in a book, you don't really know quite what the hell the thing is. True. But there you buy it. They teach it to you. It's, love it's that. pretty special. I love know? that. And just there's like it's almost like a museum in there too. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah, the yeah. the artifacts. That's right. Do you collect any um, magic artifacts? Not really. Um, it's never really interested me that much. I mean, I I have any any books I have that might be rare or old, or because I wanted to learn from them, mm -hmm. you know. And then I have a friend of mine he, in an auction bought me a uh, a letter that Harry Houdini wrote, um, and it's like it's this incredible real letter that he signed and. He had it framed, and he, he gave that to me because I officiated his wedding. Who was this? My friend Joe. What a nice guy. Yeah, and um, he, ha he just handed it to me at the, the night before the wedding. Like, here, this thanks, this is a thanks for... I was like, so that's the one thing I had. kind of like rare. I officiated my stepdaughter's wedding, and I got a water bottle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Love you, Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, so, yeah, there, there are... Speaking of magic, there are... There's a, that's loud. It's crazy. There's loud. another Harry Potter thing here. It's, what? Just, it's so strange. Like, oh, there's, yeah. there's a Harry Potter store, and then there's this thing. It's like, wow. Harry Potter probably gave the magic an world another, like another boost, right? Like, it had to. I mean, it's in a weird, but magic's in a really good place right now. People kind of respect it in a way they didn't before. I don't know why. It's like, maybe I think, I think the internet, and I think, you know, uh, Penn and Teller Fool Us in some ways. Oh, yeah, it's such like, a good show. They, now, you were on Fool Us. I was, yeah. How was your experience? I loved it. I had the best time. Do you want to walk back to your apartment area? Yeah, I like that idea. All right. Let's do it. Um, I mean, actually, you know what we can do? What time is it now? Yeah, we can walk back. We can walk back to um, 24th Street where uh, I do Speakeasy Magic. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Do you have to go there then for work? Yeah. Oh, so you're going to work now? Yeah. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. When's your first show tonight? It's at eight. Oh, okay, so you're gonna be like five hours early. <laughs> yeah. Well, there are there are things that need to be done there. All right. So, All um, right. Yeah. And uh, you know, what was this? Oh yeah. So I, I don't know. Magic's in a very cool. I mean, I think David Blaine was a big change. Like, oh yeah. Change as far yeah. as it, he he made it look you know myster mysterious and beautiful and. and it really was about the audiences. Uh, yeah, big, about the reactions. Reaction. That's yeah. right. Because every magic show before that was about the magician. All about the magician. But he turned the camera around. And he made it about them. Very smart. Yeah. Can't, he, you can't do yeah. that with juggling. <laughs> you don't get as good. You don't get good responses. <laughs> but you, you, you've done something with juggling. Right. To, I mean, it, you. It's like that, that beautiful combination of kind of taking the piss out of it, but then also doing it really well. And you know who did that the best? Who's that? Amazing Jonathan. Oh, with magic? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Uh, well, that's, that's, yeah. Why I, that's why I became what I did is, I think, I'm definitely inspired with being a really good magician, mm -hmm. while at the same time making fun of magicians. Mm -hmm. right. like that's, that's beautiful yeah, to well, me. It is. It is. I think it's that for everything. You, you can't really parody something or... or, or uh, you know, make fun of something unless you really love it. Yeah, like Weird Al. He's a oh, great musician. Yeah, he really gets music. He, he knows really gets is. it. Yeah. Yeah. And so he, and he, and he I think, tends to really like the artist that he's yeah. joking about. But yeah, he's got to do that song every night, you know? Yeah. But your, your, your thing with juggling used to be you, you'd come out and like show us right away, holy shit, the guy can juggle. Sure, yeah. And then the next thing in your mouth is kind of <laughs> not what you expect from a guy that good. Just like, at his job. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> and then later, then you keep building on the skill sets, and you know, yeah, it's, yeah, it's amazing. It's yeah, yeah, you know. Always, always a fan of that. I appreciate that. I've always yeah. been a fan of you because you always like. I would see. I would go to you and Prakash's shows, and I still do. Let me know next time oh. you guys have a public show. Yeah. But I, I love it because you and Prakash. Well, 
I don't want to give too much away, but there'd be like, you guys would kiss on the lips. <laughs> You're in your underwear. Well, there was, the, there the, was the beauty five of, animals. The beauty of kissing on the lips was we did the, we did the meanest magic trick probably ever where I, I just berate him for a good, I mean, it was a good uh, like four or five it minutes. Got, it, just, doesn't, it gets borderline uncomfortable. It went, it went from like kind of funny jokes to like really deeply personal jokes. Yes. This is all a great idea from Derek Elgadio he gave us. We're, oh, wow. What a good um, note. We're having a, we have a deck of cards uh, shuffled by the audience. Mm -hmm. Prakash takes it back and he slowly starts to look at each card and mutter them to himself. And as he's memorizing these cards, their order, this random order, I start insulting him. And then insult, insults get louder, meaner, more demonic, more like deeply personal about his appearance and his family and his, where he's from. and. Just, just, I mean, hateful, you know, like, and, and then uh, at, a, at a fever pitch, he goes, that's good, thank you. And I walk away. And then he just slowly with his eyes closed, names every card in the deck in order. He's so good. And it was incredible. Then I, I come back out and I unwrap a piece of candy. I give him some candy and then I kiss him on the mouth. <laughs> yeah. And he just says, who, so who gave you that note to kiss him on the mouth? That was my idea. That was so funny. <laughs> and when you pitched that, were you a little nervous? Oh, no. Oh, okay. Oh, but what I might catch from him? Yes. <laughs> You gotta live. You gotta live. You gotta... I mean, I don't know. It's so funny. And then we'll yeah. kiss. I'm like, huh? Yeah. No. He, once I. The great thing about Prakash is that you'll have an idea like that, and you know it's good. And he goes like, "Yes, we're doing that." Like he, because yeah. a lot of our life, as business partners, as creative partners, is, you know, disagreeing, arguing, yeah. not, not sure about the idea that the other person had, you know. Right. right. But when you land on something funny, you know we've like, yeah. that's it. You know? yeah, I like that. Like Ben and I, Ben Simon and I had a two-person show. Yes. And uh, which I never got to see, man. Well, we did it in July recently. Like it might, we might bring it back. Can bring, but, bring it here. Uh, I would love to, but sometime I think that like the show was great, and then I don't know. Like I think too many cooks in the kitchen. Oh. You start getting too many notes from other people. Oh, no, that's not good. That you'd like no. and trust. I'm like, no, the, the, the show no. we had, it was the show no. we made was good. You gotta, you gotta Put limit. Down then and... We we got really tight about that, like limiting who we take notes from. Yes. Or or you know, people will say nice things sure. after the show, but you gotta kind of turn your ears off in a way, like ah, I don't, nope, nope. Exactly. And that's not. They might have a good idea. It's just not the right idea for us or our show right, or. Right. Like you know. Yeah. 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 And it's just a matter of like that's our tastes are very specific. We want you know, and yes, so it, that's it, the thing. It, it was hard for us to create new material because we were very very tight and picky about like when we when we actually uh, <laughs> that guy distracted me. Sorry. Yeah, well, sorry. So people think that we're, we're filming we're the, filming this way. Yeah. We're filming this way. So he's waving at. So he's waving yeah. at the camera, but yeah. <laughs> he seemed a little older to be too old to be doing that. That's a very ten, that's a ten year old thing to do, right? Like, okay. Yes. Indeed. Anyway. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's, uh, finding, th finding things that matched our eccentric kind of taste as far as like how we wanted to do magic. And it, we wanted the magic to be good. Yeah. We wanted it is. It's really good. We wanted it to be funny and all. We also wanted it to be kind of a little unsettling. And yeah. at times where you're like, what the hell, what the hell, what the hell, what the hell? Yeah, I think you checked all those boxes. Yeah. We, when I, me, I tell this story in this show where I, I talk about the things that frighten me in life and I'm slowly undressing. <laughs> And never calling attention to the fact that I'm taking my jacket off, my tie, my vest, and my pants, and I'm, no. hanging, them, I'm hanging them all to Prakash, and I'm never calling attention to that fact at all, but I'm down to like whitey ties and <laughs> black business socks. And, that, oh yeah. Man, you're so fearless. Now, yeah. how, how often do you guys change the show? Well, we haven't done that, that series of tricks together. Oh, okay. I mean, Speakeasy Magic kind of took over our lives, where oh, we're true, like, true. That's, the, that's the main gig. Oh, we, right. we have ideas for stuff all the time, but that's yeah. been like the... All right, we're gonna r ride this wave until it crests. <laughs> I mean, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, yeah. No, we we we, we were just yesterday the talking about like, hey, when, when would we do this, something like this again? You know, mm -hmm. it's a matter of like, if we're here every night, what night do we do that? <laughs> right, right. You know. Well, it's always fun to you know keep working on ideas. So when the time comes, you're oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's magic's hard. You know, I, I hate to compare it. juggling. To me, is so much harder. Like I said, because yeah. gravity. Doesn't give a shit about your ideas. Oh, yeah. true. true. <laughs> well, I think uh, magic is more storytelling based, mm. and I think juggling's more like, look what I can do real quick. Right. Maybe. I mean, for me at least. I think. Pend and I, I try to build stories, but you sure do. But I mean, we, well, Pendulette was the one who said to me, he's like, you know, you can walk into a room full of magicians, and you can't immediately know how good that guy is or that guy is, but 
room full of jugglers practicing juggling, you're like, that's the best guy here. Yeah, yeah, you can tell. That guy's horrible. Yep. That guy's struggling, but he's good, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's that's just, me. I'm the guy struggling, but good. I don't know, man. Struggling with the juggling. I don't know. Yeah, I think you're too modest. Uh, well, I, especially now because I don't practice. Oh. So when I get booked for a juggling show, if it pays good, I'll do it. You warm up, don't you? I mean, you, you got to warm up a little bit, right? Do you? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you should, <laughs> but I'm a little, I'm like, eh. And, and like, also, I only juggle for about three minutes. Oh, yeah. Very short amount you of do, time. Some of that shit you do, like the fucking thing bouncing in your, in your, what do you call that? It's on your head and you it falls back that, and you kick it. That's called a blind kick. Good God. Yeah, that took a while. Yes. And that's something you can just do, you can wake up and just do? Yeah, yeah, Fuck that one you. I can. Oh, my now. God. Yeah. That's wait, amazing. Wake him and just do that. Yeah, I mean, I've done it for so long. It's all mus muscle memory. And you must have that, too. Like, you can probably do, like, you, you can do, like, the coin manipulation. I got to I got to like, I've got to, like, um, yeah, sure, but I'm better when I've, I've just done a little bit of warm-up. You know, I've done a little bit. That, are, we, are we time for those time yeah, traps? No, we just... I don't know if you can see that car that just went by. I didn't do a great job filming <laughs> they it were, I wasn't sure. That was, we, we got frozen and like, oh shit. It looked like a car that could also take on the ocean. <laughs> yeah. Like it also looked like a boat car. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, no, if I, if I warm up, like tonight, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spend, I don't know, 20 minutes just shuffling cards, getting my hands right. Yeah. And, uh, so that's what you do to warm up? You kind of just shuffle like, you yeah, have, like finger exercises. Usually. Yeah, a little, little bit, like very minor. But I, but I, it, a lot of it's warming, warming my voice up, so I can you gotta shout in this oh, yeah. room, and you gotta be able to project and not hurt your throat, you know, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. So if I don't do that stuff, I'm kind of screwed. <laughs> Audience won't understand me, and my hands won't work. So. Absolutely. <laughs> and well, yeah, I'm just, I don't know, I'm feeling my body age, <laughs> or you know, pre-arthritis probably. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? Does that worry you, like getting out oh. Like that. The, the only nightmares I ever have, I don't really have like stress dreams ever, but I, I, I the, the only ones I have are, yeah, my something happening to my hands, yeah. I can't perform anymore, or uh, an MC is introducing me, I can hear them doing it, and I'm not remotely ready, I'm like, oh, you know. That happened to me recently, Yeah. during the gig, during the pandemic. They paid me like $5,000. I don't mind saying that because I don't get that every show. No. That was a good gig for me. Yeah. I flew down to uh, Florida uh -huh. and it was on a golf course. It was on a golf this, course. This does not sound like it had any COVID restrictions at all. Florida, yeah. a golf course. Well, it was outside. <laughs> okay. And okay. everyone had, everyone was, it was on the ninth hole. Oh, wow. Yep. And everyone was in golf carts. Yep. And they said, yeah, the guy's going to talk for like 30 minutes, then we'll put you on. I wasn't even dressed. I was changing in the <laughs> bathroom. Didn't go through my sound cues. Oh. Didn't tech anything. Oh. And it was so windy oh. that my case flew, blew over in the wind. It was awful. I did like 20 minutes of like the worst oh. juggling you've ever seen in your life. And Jesus, man. And it, it would have been. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I had a, I was just telling the story that I think I had some COVID gigs, you know. Yeah, and, well, it wasn't was COVID, yeah. It was hard. It was yeah. hard. I mean, I mean, there was one that was on the the top of what used to be the Nomad Hotel, and it was a snowy night, covered, snow was everywhere. It was so cold, I had to wear gloves. Like, oh, wow. I had a, we, had, we had to stay, be masked. And there's only like five people sitting out in the snow, freezing to death. And I'm trying to do fucking magic tricks for them. How do you do that when your hands don't work? You can't. I don't think I did. I think no. I think I just I, I kind of shit the bed for like an hour, and uh, I has I was in a hat, had a hat and a scarf, and then I also they had the rest of their team on Zoom. Uh huh. So I'm trying to entertain these people on Zoom. And it was a fucking. Nightmare. Oh my god! So you had a live audience. Yeah. And a Zoom Horrible. Audience. And it's snowing. And it's snowing. It was a bad idea all around. That's a no bad problem. idea. That's but, bad. but it paid enough, and I was like, well, I don't know. if... I don't know when work's coming back, so I gotta, I gotta take this. You gotta take the gig. I Man, that was rough. I, but you made it through, and you're a better performer now because of it. That's why uh, I take those shit gigs. <laughs> I mean, they don't always make you a better performer. Well, it's that, it's that thing, that, that, that old saying that what kills you makes you, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Yeah. Sometimes it maims you for, permanently, and yeah. you're, yeah, you're, it scars you, you're not dead, but yeah, your left side of your body doesn't work. Very <laughs> so, I don't know about it. How good that yeah. old saying is. Yeah. Do you have any, any like war stories <laughs> that have given you PTSD? Oh God. Oh man. Um, 
Yeah, I just, I mean, oh, you know, sometimes it wasn't even the gig, it was just getting to the gig. Oh, you know? sure, yeah. I had a gig in Vegas uh, in January where they'd already paid me in full. And it was a lot, a lot of money. And that money has been spent, it's gone. <laughs> like, I, you know, yeah. I had it, but it was a big, big paycheck. Yeah. And I had to leave from one gig in Fort Lauderdale to get to Vegas, and I had to connect in Minneapolis, which I did not want to do, but I had to. And I got to Minneapolis with plenty of time. We're sitting there on the runway, and now we're sitting on the runway, and now we're sitting on the runway, and my connection's one gate over. But we're just sitting there, and then we finally get to the gate, finally, and I'm like, okay, okay, I have to get out of here. I, I gotta run, I gotta run. The, the, the gate bridge, that yeah. thing they drive over, Yeah. That guy clearly had never done it before, oh, and no. he couldn't line it up. Oh my God! So now I've got like literally a minute and a half until oh my, my gates and my, ah. and my my bags are already on the other other oh <laughs> other plane now. Oh no! I finally get out. I rush. I, I jump over a child. I'm like, I get yeah. to that gate, and it says boarding closed. No! And I miss my connection. And when I finally get to, uh, I, I'm running all around the. Airport trying to find people to, to will help me. No one will help me. No one helps. I got to be on that black phone with the bad music, you know. Yeah. And then finally, uh, yeah. after a, hours and hours and hours, I finally get a, a flight to Vegas. But I'm going to arrive an hour before the gig starts. Wow. So I'm like, okay, okay, okay. So I, 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 I get to Vegas. This is, I, I'm, I'm, I'm condensing this all, obviously. Yeah. And I get my bags, my, with my suit in it and all my props. And then I, oh, I, <laughs> I, I, I've got a car service. I, 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 I requested a car service so I, I don't have to wait for a cab. I can just get in the car. I get to him, and he, bless his heart, doesn't speak a word of English, but he gets me into the van. I'm like, all right, let's go. And I see he's waiting for someone else because he's booked two people. No. And I'm like, no, we got to go, we got to go. And she, this woman sees me. We both panic. Like, no, we didn't, do, we didn't agree to this. And anyway, she runs away. He gets in the van. I give him the address. He drives slower than anyone's ever driven oh in their God. fucking life through Las Vegas. I hate this. I'm begging him. I get to the, uh, oh, by the way, I've got to take the worst, like, adrenaline shit of my entire life oh, at this point. God. My whole body is ready to, like, just completely evacuate. And yeah. So we, we get to the front desk, and the, they're, they're not really helpful. But I, I get to my room. I get to my room. I just explode all my clothes everywhere. Yeah. Take, a quick, take the wor longest, heaviest shit of my life, and I'm on the phone while I'm doing it, calling the front desk because I can't find an iron oh, to steam no. my suit. Oh, no. <laughs> so I'm just in hell. And I, and I, I finally get dressed. I finally get, and I race downstairs. And I get to the event space, and I arrive literally 30 seconds before the event starts. Wow. I cannot believe Anything that would have gone wrong after that, I would have missed wow. the gig. And, and, I'm, and they know I'm That's running late. Crazy. They know I'm, I'm calling them. I'm, okay. I'm trying to. That was just this past January. I, I, oh. wake, I wake up in a cold sweat. Oh thinking about that day that that would keep me up because i would have owed a lot of money that i didn't oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you spent that money hey it was just that thing you know i, I to, paid you all in advance <clears throat> i mean i get paid in advance now i don't want right. to right. i don't do the the deposits anymore i don't want to oh, no? do it no but because i want to you're making them like pay you have to i gotta chase it twice now you know and oh, like yeah. so this is the overlook bar this is where it all happens oh this is it yeah there yeah we are. all right if you want to come this is that club. this is incredible Crazy Legs Conti right here. It's the only trick I do, though. Oh. Whoa! Whoa. That's really nice. Full of magic. Yeah. Nice. Oh. Yeah. Know, my bladder's oh. <laughs> wow. Matt, where, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, MatthewHoltzclaw.com or on Instagram, MatthewHoltzclaw, <laughs> at MatthewHoltzclaw, and uh, that's about it. Matthew Holtzclaw, we did it. Talkie walkie. <laughs>